Just a great scene here in Frisco, Texas, outside the championship plaza, the Dallas Cowboys, Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you ringside. And it is time for our main event. Pablo Cesar Cano and Fidel Maldonado. As Teddy said earlier, keyword urgency. You look at the fork in the road of each career, they have come to it now. Do they maintain status and grow or take a step back? Tale of the Tape is presented by Takate. And on top of that list is the stance, Orthodox against Southpaw. And Cano hasn't fought a lefty in seven years. When he did, he struggled to get by with a split decision. That was against a fighter who had lost eight of his last nine prior to that meeting with Cano. And on that note, Maldonado said, well, Cano surely is a different fighter now. For the official introductions, let's head up to the ring to Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live on ESPN around the world from the star here in Frisco, Texas. It is time for the main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing this scheduled for the vacant WBC Fecker Box Super Lightweight Championship. Presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by Cerveza Tecate Born Bowl and Hennessy Never Stop, Never Settle. Sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, WBC supervisor in attendance for this bout is Monar. Your three judges scoring at ringside on the 10-point must system, Don Griffin, Jesse Reyes, and Oren Schellenberger. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Lawrence Cole. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Texas, make some noise if you are ready! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing tonight purple and silver, he weighed officially 140 pounds even. In 27 professional bouts, his record stands at 23 victories, three defeats, one draw, and 19 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the fighting pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Atrisco King, Fidel Maldonado Jr. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the colors of Mexico, representando con verde, plateado y rojo. Wearing green, silver, and red, he weighed in 139 and one half pounds. A 36 fight veteran, holding 30 victories, including 21 knockouts, five defeats, and one draw. Here is the former WBA interim light welterweight champion of the world, Desde Tlanepat, La Mexico, presentando el demonador, Pablo Cesar Cano. All right, Fernando, no problem, no problem. Pablo. All right, gentlemen, let's have a good clean fight. Play Olympia, good luck, win a sword fight. Teddy, CompuBox numbers tell us that this could be a can't miss the other guy kind of fight, especially with the power shots. Cano's opponents have landed over 36% of their power punches against him. Maldonado's opponents are landing nearly 40%, and both land their power shots well. Cano landing over 40%, Maldonado nearly 42%. The junior welter average is 36%. Let's look for that. Yeah, and I'm going to look for Maldonado, the Sapo. If he's going to do well, if he's going to win this fight, it's going to be more on the outside. Not that he won't have moments going inside, but it'll have to be more on the outside. I think Cano, he's the bigger guy, he's the busier guy. I think he's a more versatile guy. I like Cano a lot. And he's fought the better competition more recently in his career. The combined record of his last five opponents, 111, 31, and 4, 76% win percentage. To that point, Joe, and it's a good point, not only has Cano fought the better competition, but he has won at a level that Maldonado has not been able to win at. That means a lot to me when I evaluate a fight. Not to mention, Cano has been to the mountain twice, didn't get to stay there, didn't get to set up a home there, but he fought for the title, a world title, both 
two times. Many felt that he deserved the nod against Pauli Malinaji as he came on so strong at the end of that fight back in 2012. That was a split decision loss back then. Early in his career, when he ran his record undefeated, he got thrown in maybe a little too soon against Eric Morales, was taken out in 10 there, and was in against Sugar Shane Mosley in 2013. Again, to my point so far early, things can change. Modernado trying to be the slicker guy, change distance a little bit, use his legs a little bit, be a little cuter. And he's trying to be cute there, doing a little salsa. Switching back and forth, doing a little swing of those hips. And then when he looks to score, for Maranato, it's usually always with that power punch from Southpaw. The backhand, the left hand. Maldonado scored with the left hand that time as Canelo, as uh, Cano fell in. Yeah, that's his confidence. That's his Sunday punch. Canelo not getting the landscape that he really envisioned or he likes so far early for Maranato. He likes a guy that's going to lead a little bit with him where he can slip that lead and counter right back. There's nothing to slip, nothing to counter back so far for Cano. Bononato's being a little, little too slick, a little cute right now. Just moving on the outside is Fidel Maldonado. Final 20 seconds here of round number one. Yeah, Maldonado trying to be a shadow and make Cano chase that shadow. End of one here from Frisco, Texas. Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN, presented by Takate. Um, yeah, I'll take it. You got it. Watch how the slickness works here for Maldonado. Takes a little step back, gets Cano to reach in a little bit, does some countering with that dominant hand, the southpaw hand, the left hand. That's what you call setting a trap. Not a mouse trap, no cheese in there. Just a little step back, getting Cano to bite a little bit, and look at a counter. Maldonado from Albuquerque, New Mexico, against that man, Pablo Cesar Cano, who most of his success was found at home in Mexico, fought 31 of his 37 fights in Mexico, has a two and three record in the U.S. with one no contest. Already 11 years into his pro career, made his pro debut at only 16 years old in Mexico. I said it earlier, so far, true to the point, Maldonado, if he's going to win, he's going to win by being a slicker guy and scoring with that, whether it's to the body, that time it was to the body or to the head. The left hand, that's his dominant hand. His right hand is kind of window dressing. You know, set up punch, distracting punch, but the left hand is the one that Maldonado looks to score with. It was a left hand to the body that time by Maldonado. Maldonado getting so much confidence from that first round of being slick that now he's starting to push the foot down on the pedal a little bit. Different disposition here from the 25-year-old. Led with the left, and Cano came back with a little half uppercut with a left hand of his own as he's taking half steps back. Let's see if he can draw Maldonado in here. Cano has scar tissue over both eyes. Been involved in some head clashes, nothing yet, but he does have a technical win from cuts caused by a head clash. And Maldonado, I mean, Cano has been cut in six fights, three of them from head clashes. 
pretty significant, especially if the footwork goes awry with lefty versus righty. Last couple fights, Cano hasn't bled. He had some surgery that he feels went well in terms of removing old scar tissue, especially after the Malinaji fight. Maldonado has been cut also from a head clash in his career. You know, I, I talked about the setup earlier when we went on camera, Joe, that I thought Maldonado could get out of the gate quickly and get off to a better start than Cano, and he needed to, because I thought maybe down the stretch, Cano would be coming on like a great racehorse. And the reason why I thought Maldonado could get out to an early start, well, he only fought two and a half months ago, and Cano, he has not fought for seven months. And Maybe that's the rust, the inactivity we're seeing in Cano right now. Let's see if he shakes it off. End of two. Short break. We'll be right back. I'll tee Teddy up here. Te digo, cuando él se acerca, paso para atrás y ahí lo campeas. César, cuando él se acerca, yeah. paso para atrás y ahí lo campeas. Recibelo con el upper de derecha al flechus o aquí a la quijada. Métele también los uppers aquí, los dos uppers y luego el gancho. Cámbiale las combinaciones. As Pablo Cesar Cano gets instructions okay. from his father Cámbiale and his assistant Alejandro look at the arriba. former champions sí, that he fought. Vamos. Teddy, back in 2012, that was a split decision okay. against Malinaji that many ringside observers favored Cano okay. in. Yeah, a lot of people did think, think that he won that fight. He's, it's not the Cano we're seeing right now early on. And again, part of it is the rust, maybe, and you can only hope if you're in the corner or if you're a backer support of Cano that it's the rust and that the rust will be removed as the rounds go on because Cano, like I said earlier, seven months not in action and Maldonado only two and a half months ago in the ring. But also part of it, give credit to Maldonado. He's fighting an elusive fight, a tricky fight, changing range, not allowing Cano really to get what he likes, which is somebody leading in front of him where he can slip to either side and counter right back. It's what he had against Mauricio Herrera, that fight that you mentioned back in Absolutely. November. He averaged nearly 78 punches per round in that fight. He threw 200, landed 203 power punches that night. So we'll start here as Maldonado builds some confidence. Such a critical fight for each man in terms of moving forward in their careers. Small steps forward for Cano, searching. There is a lead left hand to the body from Maldonado. Listen, I'm not making an excuse for Cano. Maldonado's being the man in there right now. You know, controlling things. Being the ring director, the ring general, as they like to talk about, important to the scoring. Who's got ring generalship? So far, that's all Maldonado. But I must point out, because of the lack of performance so far from Cano, he came in 139 and a half. That's his lowest weight in over five years. I was thinking about this today when I was going over my notes and I was looking at that. I said to myself, I wonder, he's a big guy. I wonder if he got down too low. I wonder if it's going to affect him tonight. I'm wondering right now, is it affecting him? And let me offer this as well. The recent days here of these fighters preparing and getting on the scale here in North Texas have been pressing up against 100 degrees. And even here, late at night, under the lights, the temp is still in the mid 80s. Absolutely, and that can drain you. That can dehydrate you, get the electrolytes out of you. And if you don't replace those things, and you don't have enough time to replace those, from a nutritional standpoint, you suffer in the ring. I wonder if Cano is suffering in the ring physically right now, having come in lower than he should have. 
fighting outside here at Tostitos Championship Plaza at the Star, the world headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys in Frisco, Texas. Stay with us. Thrilled you're with us here on Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN, presented by Tecate. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you ringside. Our main event, Pablo Cesar Cano against Fidel Maldonado, two guys who got off to good starts in their career. Cano went a little further, rising to the top with championship opportunities. Maldonado was unbeaten at 13-0 before losing back-to-back -back fights in 2012, and both seeing this as a critical juncture for the remainder of their career to stay on course. The way this fight's going so far, first three rounds I've given to Maldonado, Cano might need to land what often I call that southpaw killer, that right hand that is usually or often effective against the lefty. Just to turn the tempo, change the tempo, change the momentum of this fight. Well, that right hand power punch could come in handy. Let's look at CompuBox and how they have the power punches. The efficiency rate percentage landed as of right now favors Maldonado at 43%. Cano has to be disappointed with that number landed right now at only 19 to this point. And talking about that word disappointed, before you fans at home that have been watching and listening get too disappointed about Cano, let me remind you, we don't know how good Maldonado's chin is. He's been on the floor two fights ago with a 17-17-1 opponent, and he was also on the floor with a one and three opponent. So you wonder about that set of whiskers a little bit. But again, if you're gonna test that beard, that chin, you gotta land something. Cano hasn't been able to do that yet. In total in his career, Teddy Maldonado's been knocked down eight times. The fight you referenced, January of 2015 against Amir Iman, knocked down four times in that fight. Yeah, again, the whiskers. Sometimes fights come down to complicated things. Sometimes there's simple things. And nothing sometimes more simple than, oh, who's got the better chin? But again, the chin, bad chin, weak chin, China chin means nothing if your opponent's not landing on it. And right now, Cano not coming close to the chin of Maldonado. I remember my mentor, the great Customato, somebody asked him one time about one of his fighters, how's his chin? He said, I hope I never find out. That's a good point. You don't want to know the answer. Oh, the good yeah, yeah. combination! Talking about it! Cano, what are we talking about? Cano needed it, and Cano got it. All of a Five, sudden, he finds six, the power punch seven, and scores the knockdown. Eight. Come to me. Exactly what we're talking about. Right hand. Southpaw killer, the chin being questionable about Maldonado. Hadn't been able to find the chin. All of a sudden, hey, finds the chin, bang, turns the fight right around. Teddy on cue, you question it. You said look out for it. Let's listen in to the corner. Hennessy, never stop, never settle corner hey, camp. Hey, keep him tight, you have fast ridge there, okay? We're good, we're good, here, breathe. You're already halfway through this. Like that yeah, you gotta be. You gotta good. You're doing fucking good. You're just saying, you gotta keep it up. You sat there for a second. 
Hey, 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 if you gotta stay with that jab, say that jab, you gotta give me an answer. You're, you're, you're throwing it, you're staying stuck. No, you don't, you roll, roll, you ward it. Okay? Give me some speed on this fucker. All right, Teddy, those closing bam, bam, moments there of round four. Let's get go through it. I get out of there. Give me the jab. Well, we're starting to step it up, stepping up that pace. Left hook landed first, then the right hand. Again, just started moving his hands more. Maybe got some of that rust off we were talking about. Right hand to the body, froze him a little bit, and then the left hook upstairs, on, followed by the right hand. Bit. Nice Brace combination. I uh, need some extra time being gained here as Lawrence Cole is asking them to fix the grease underneath the eye of Maldonado. He's cut on that cheek just below the eye. It happened late in the round. Knocked down, scored there by Pablo Cesar Cano. And what a different fight we have now. Yeah, and what a different fight the fans have at home because what were we just saying moments, moments before that, that if you're a Cano fan and you're disillusioned, you're discouraged, don't get too down. Maldonado has been on the floor many times, as you said, and he's been on the floor with lesser opponents than Cano. This is a fight now. End of round number four changed everything. Now we're gonna find out, not just what kind of chin Maldonado has, but what kind of constitution he has. Can he keep himself together? Does he fall apart? Can he keep boxing the way he was boxing? when he wasn't pressured early, when he had it his way, when it was a nice Sunday walk in the park, the sun was shining. Now there's clouds, now there's thunder, couple lightning bolts. How's he gonna act now? Ninth time in his career he's hit the deck. I picked Cano to win this fight. One of the reasons I've been, he hasn't won it. He lost those first three rounds. He's made a great comeback, but I picked him partly because I thought he had the better chin been in with the better opposition, and I just felt that mentally he was stronger. We're gonna find out whether or not that's true. Maldonado just a little flicker, keep away with that right jab. I'll tell you what I don't like here, Joe. I don't like the fact that after scoring a knockdown, Cano has taken his foot off the gas. Completely agree, Teddy. I thought he was primed to be more the aggressor here at the start of round number five. And it makes me question again, what's in the tank? What's in the tank of Medley? What does he think's in the tank? Did he do too much to get this weight down? Because otherwise, what is the explanation for not pushing the envelope more right now after scoring a knockdown, especially when he knows he was behind in the fight? Breeze picking up here outside in Frisco, Texas. If I'm Cano, I'm using my jab, taking the jab away from Maldonado, closing the gap behind that jab, jab using the jab of I'm Cano to keep Maldonado from pot shotting, picking his spots on the outside. In other words, put some bugs on the windshield so he can't do that. You know, use that jab to block his vision so he can't pop you the way he just did. Lead left hand. Just a pop and then wrap and stop from Maldonado. But this has been at the pace that Maldonado needed after the devastation at the end of round number four when Cano was able to get to him. And good work with the right jab. You got Maldonado there? You like yeah, 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 I agree. For you young fighters out there, this is what happens when you don't use your jab. You allow the guy to jump in, pot shot you. Exactly what happens when you don't put 
bugs on the windshield. When you don't use your jab to distract the vision of your opponent, you follow him around, and then all of a sudden he pops right in there with the left hand. Good job coming back, as Joe said, that last round after the knockdown the round before. Good job by Maldonado. So much so that he really settled into exactly what he wanted. And Teddy, at least on my scorecard, I gave Maldonado that fifth round. I've got it four rounds to one for Maldonado. Now the one round's a 10-8 round in favor of Pinot with the knockdown score. And now again, Maldonado went from boxing to being the man again. And now he's got that confidence back. He's pressing. But one thing that he shouldn't forget, he's pressing, but he's pressing with a guy that doesn't have the stern his chin. See, I don't know if I want my guy pressing if he doesn't have to stern his chin. Well, it's a risk, risk-reward. Landed time to left hand moments ago. Cano obviously able to get to him earlier with that combination of left hook, right hand. No jab, really, for the most part, from Cano. That's hurt because it's allowing, again, it's allowing Maldonado to have a clear vision, do what he wants. Now, that's no jab from Cano. I don't care. I saw a left hand go out right there. That's like you do. But he's pawing with that's it. He's pushing with it. Not snapping it out there. Not using it as a weapon. It's nothing that has to be honored or respected by Maldonado. Well said. Again, I wonder if the weight, I, I got to say it again, came in. His lowest weight in over five years, Cano. I wonder if that is hindering him a little bit because he should be pressing forward more. And I believe Cano should definitely not only be using the jab to control the outside, take the outside away from Maldonado, but it should be going to the bottom, the basement a little bit, going to the body a little bit. Why? Because Maldonado's using his legs to navigate around the ring, give you problems with his legs. What's one of the better ways to stop someone from using their legs? Go to the body, remove some air from those tires. No flat tires for Maldonado, not at all. Utilize those legs well here in round number six after settling back in in round five after going down to the canvas in round four. As we come to the end of this sixth round, there's a body shot with a left hand, the power punch from Maldonado. We will go to the Hennessy Never Stop, Never Settle corner cam, the red corner of Pablo Cesar Cano and his father and his assistant Alejandro and Carlos Vargas, the cup man, and Saul will translate. You, you got to have your hands in front of you. Listen to me. Stand in front, hit to the body, and then come up to the top. Three punches at a time. When you throw the right hand, you, you, you land. And then we need a one-two. Then you gotta throw the right hand faster. Like a thunder. The fight is still open. We can still win. Listen. So that is what he's charged with. Yeah, I heard him talk about thunder, but I'd like to see some lightning. And for me, the lightning needs to be represented by one punch that I did not hear mentioned at all in that corner, the jab. No jab, no success for Cano. Because that's what's gonna allow him to get closer. That's what's gonna take away the boxing that's been befuddling him so much tonight from Maldonado. That's a slip right there as he was off balance as went back as Maldonado came forward. I often tell you to watch the front feet when we get the southpaw versus orthodox matchup. And who can control the outside. 
in cases like we just saw, it can also result in slips like that. Who's controlling the outside and how? Montanato with two things. Yeah, with his jab and yeah, with his legs. Using his jab, get off, using his legs to change range and keep Cano, who thinks of himself as the better puncher, but you can't be the better puncher if you're not set. And that's exactly what Maldonado's doing. Keeping Cano off balance, not letting him get set. Beautiful night of boxing from Maldonado. Of course, the regrettable moment came in the final seconds of the fourth round when Cano was able to score the knockdown. The beauty of this fight is that knowing the struggles Maldonado has had in his career with his chin, nine times now he's been on the canvas, no matter what's happening with the boxing, no matter what's happening with the scorecards, Cano is always in the fight. To the point that we made earlier, and then bang, he was in the fight, exactly. But again, bad chin or no bad chin, and Maldonado might have a bad chin. It doesn't matter if Cano is not attacking that chin, not touching that chin. In the last two rounds after dropping Maldonado, that's been the case. Cano not touching the chin of Maldonado, and you're not gonna touch the chin reaching in like that. Needs to use that jab, say it again, Cano. Not only to stop the boxing of Maldonado, but to close the gap so you can touch that chin. Maybe deliver one of those big right hands. Instead, more movement from Maldonado, boxing his way to the end of seven here. Three to go in our main event. Cuando tú lo presionas, ese güey ya no sabe qué hacer. Cuando tú lo presionas, ya no sabe qué hacer. Necesitas ponerle ya una pinche presión, porque en un round pueden cambiar muchas cosas. Y vamos bien. ¿Para, para, qué, para qué arriesgarnos? ¿Para qué arriesgarnos? Ok, tienes que tirar cuatro, cuatro o seis golpes. Con otra caída ganamos, pero bonito. Ok, no dejes de tirar, porque cuando tú dejas de tirar, le das la iniciativa a él. Y ya no puedes hacer lo tuyo. Tienes que estar encima de él, encima, marcando, marcando. Y esta derecha no te la guardes. Cuando la sacas con, con fuerza y rápido, con velocidad, lo lastimas. ¿Entiendes? Saca la, la derecha. Here at the Star in Frisco, Texas, 91 acres of entertainment, practice facilities, and Dallas Cowboys team offices, and right in the midst of the 50-yard replica turf field in their championship plaza is home to Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN. Three rounds to go here in our main event. Right now, Pablo Cesar Cano, who scored the lone knockdown of this main event, has been outboxed by Fidel Maldonado. And you see sometimes we talked about in the fight plan that premature head movement of Cano from too far out every once in a while. There it is, a little too far out. And Maldonado in his spots, to his credit, has gone that. Has stepped in, we talked about in the fight plan, has pot shot it, has watched that head movement and timed it. Stepped right in with a quick jab and his power punch, the left hand. Again, you see. Maldonado's mindset. Stand on the outside, be ready, stay out of range, be ready, and when there's moments to pounce, pounce. Again, look at the mindset, look at what is being manifested physically with that mindset of Maldonado. So staying on the outside, in control, and looking for his moments. Look at the pot shot with a quick jab, straight left hand. He's waiting to see that premature movement of Cano, and then looks to do that. And he'll score with the left hand, 25-year-old southpaw. Both these guys, in terms of the boxing 
mileage on the odometer and what they've done in their careers feel much older than 25 and 27. That's a good point, Joe. I always say we do not judge the ages of fighters chronologically. We do it by the amount of punches, the tough fights they've been in. And Cano is acting like a guy, looking like a guy that's a little warm. John Pro at 16 years old in Mexico. This would mean a lot to Maldonado if he's able to secure this. Bruce has to climb out of that one hole in the fourth round, 10-8 round in favor of Cano. Cano has been a pro to your point. 11 years, three months, Maldonado, seven and a half years. No, not the desperation you would expect from Cano. Has to take a different approach, just has to change things up here as there will be six minutes of action remaining when we come to the end of round number eight from right here in Frisco. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. Hey, Mike. Talking about a little bit of pot shotting. Catch your man going straight back. He's at a disadvantage. In other words, read the road map. Look at the road in front of you and where you're going and what you need to do. That's exactly what Maldonado did there. He saw Cano going straight back, knew he wasn't set to counter to do anything, no danger. Stepped right in there, followed him with that dominant left hand of the southpaw. Ninth round scheduled for 10, but a good night of boxing here outside of Dallas at the Cowboys World Headquarters here at the Star. If you didn't hear it earlier, Andre Ward scored a TKO win against Sergey Kovalev, unifying the 175 pound belts back in the fall and then winning the rematch against Kovalev tonight. He's now 32 and 0. And he does one thing, Ward. He's been doing it since he's about 12 years old. He wins. So there'll be a shakeup on the pound for pound list as Kovalev will surely dip with that loss. You know, at the very end of the last round, after the bell, it looked like Cano landed a shot against Mononato that affected him a little bit, got his attention, maybe even hurt him a little bit. But he has not come out here, again, pressing the envelope the way you th he needs to, the way you would think that he would understand, his people in the corner would understand. As was the case in round number five when he had the advantage coming off that knockdown in the fourth. Exactly. Blew his moment right there. Yes. I thought that was really the swing moment of this main event, but could we have something late here as they're squared up on the inside? And again, when I see the punch from Cano, I don't see the power I've seen before in a good left hand to the body from Maldonado. I don't see the power that I've seen before in tape I've watched on Cano. I'm wondering, did he drain himself to make this weight? And I'll tell you another thing I'm wondering about, Joe. I'm wondering if the father, the trainer of Cano in the corner is telling his son the truth. And I don't mean that he would purposely lie to him, but does he know the truth? Can he recognize the truth being a father? Watching his son in there, is he seeing what he's not doing, or is he only seeing what he's doing and what he wants to see? Both these fighters are trained by their fathers. It is Father's Day on the East Coast right now. We approach it in 10 minutes here in the Central Time Zone. Always a unique relationship that we often have in boxing. Sometimes greatly to the benefit, often a detriment when it comes to critical moments of guidance in fight. 
nearly a clash of heads that time on that exchange. Maldonado laps it off. Both men trying to get work to the body. Final 10 seconds of round number nine. Good place to go, Canola body. Might be a little too late in the fight. Maldonado's actually had a little bit of success with the left hand to the body here in this round. One round to go. Let's go to the corner. The Hennessy never stop, never settle corner camp. This is the last round, son. The frost is in the pudding. We need to win. We need to win. Beautiful. You need to uh, make yourself like a warrior. Breathe deep. Beautiful, beautiful. This is the last round. This is the last one. You have the power. You know you can do it. You throw more right hands. More, more punches. Let go of the right hand. More water. Give him more water. You got to win by knockout. The, mo the most important message was the last message. You heard, you know you have the power. Let the right hand go. But the final message, you have to win by knockout, considering that he has a 10-8 round in the bag. And even with that, it's clear to see that Maldonado has outboxed him all night long. Can Cano do it? I'll tell you what I thought, and I agree with you, but what I thought might have been the most important words in that message in the corner at the very end. Give him water. He wants water. And he never got the water. You pointed that out earlier that you question it and you then know that they didn't do it. Never got the water. How can that be, Teddy? How can that be so mismanaged in a corner? Because guys get excited. People's emotions come to the front where they need to be kept to the back and not everybody can handle pressure and handle those kind of moments in the corner and think straight. Some people think straight, calm, cool, some don't. And they miss the job they need to do. And the water is important. A lot of fans home, Teddy, water, water, yeah, water. It's 85 degrees here at night. It's been, it's been over close to 100 degrees. Joe talked about it all week. Cano came in the lightest weight in over five years. He had to push himself to make the weight. You need to get that water back. You need to be hydrated. If you're not, you will be weakened. Cano looks like a weakened guy to me. And Maldonado looks like a guy who's pretty smart. Final rounds coming up on the final minute. Cano desperate. Right hand scored for him earlier and did the job, but we haven't seen it since. See, that's smart. Maldonado knows he's ahead in the fight. He can afford to be born. Move around, go into the prevent defense, grab on the inside. It's up to Cano not to let those things happen. Not to allow him to grab on the inside. He goes to grab, take a half step back. Like right there, and punch. Don't allow him to look to grab. Well managed and bookended night for Maldonado if he can hold on here. He came out like this early on, frustrating with his legs and boxing. Pressed the action in the middle. Had the one moment of defensive lapse when he went down in the fourth. Came back strongly to settle in at five, six, and seven. And now, hoping to get to the finish line here. Half a minute to go. Cano has to try to land the right hand. Has to close the gap. How can he land it? Well, let's forget about the conventional way, the way that maybe he should have, would have, could have, but didn't do it. Using the jab to set it up. Now, the only way he can land it, I see, is to time it. Time Maldonado as he jumps in a little bit. Takes it to the bell. Fidel Maldonado, the way we see it, he boxes his way to a win, even though he was on the canvas in the fourth. How will the ringside judges see it? We will find out when we return. Stay with us.
Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN is presented by Tecate Born Bowls. And brought to you by Hennessy Never Stop, Never Settle. It's been an outstanding night here, this fight event here in Frisco, Texas, outside of the championship plaza. Our main event was a beautiful job of boxing from Fidel Maldonado against Pablo Cesar Cano, who had the one moment to shine. It came in the fourth round, a 10-8 round, as he scored the knockdown in the final moments. But Maldonado got back to basics and settled in. Teddy, how did you score this fight? I got it 97-92, Maldonado. Only one guy won this fight. He gave a boxing lesson to Cano and was allowed to do what he wanted to do. Went on the outside, Cano just did not push the matter enough. You want to prove the boxing lesson that Teddy Atlas notes? Look at the total punches landed for Cano, only 14%, only landed 12 total jabs. Not that Maldonado's pace was scintillating, but defensively masterful, utilized his legs and outboxed him all night long. For the official decision, let's go up to Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Here are the totals. Don Griffin scores at 97-92. Maldonado. Yeah. Oren Schellenberger has it 96-93. Cano. And Jesse Reyes scores it 97-92 for your winner by split decision. And now the WBC Feckerbach Super Lightweight Champion, the Atrisco yeah. Kid, Fidel Maldonado Jr. Split decision win for Fidel Maldonado Jr. The matching 97-92 is clear to see that way often the case that there will be a judge who gets caught up into a knockdown and thinks he's seeing something subsequent well, to that maybe, that doesn't maybe, exist. Maybe it was the heat. It could be. But a split decision, bottom line is the right guy won. 25-year-old Southpaw, Fidel Maldonado Jr. as Pablo Cesar Cano, who felt like he had some career momentum back after the win against Herrera, comes up short. Good night from Frisco, it's been a good one. For Teddy, I'm Joe Tessitore. Enjoy the rest of your evening.